There it is. On February 15th of 1993... And now we get to the main fucking course, dude. The northern city of Liverpool, England, would bear witness to one of the most shocking and horrific cases in its history. Police on Merseyside say that two-year-old James Bulger, who disappeared from a shopping precinct at the weekend, was horribly murdered and then dumped on a railway line. They say that someone must know the identity of the two boys who took James from the precinct. Inch by inch, the police have searched the railway line where two-year-old James Bulger's body was found yesterday. The scene is still protected from the elements for forensic work. The body itself was removed late last night. His uncle had identified him. It had been spotted earlier by four schoolboys. Is playing. The blurred images of two youths seen taking James away are now all over the city. The public say detectives hold the key to finding them. They believe James was killed locally, then his abandoned body was hit by a train. We know it is a murder inquiry. There's, there's not as we'd first hope we were going to find James and return him to his parents. It is horrific what has taken place. And there must somewhere be somebody who will know the identity of the two boys who were seen with James. James's blue and mustard hood, seen here in a security video, has now been recovered. It had been missing from his clothing but was found nearby. Police have set up a temporary base in the shopping centre. They're warning parents that other children could be vulnerable. For goodness sake, keep tight hold of your children. Poor James only went missing from his mother for a matter of seconds and he'd gone and disappeared. It was a warning heeded as parents picked up their children from school. I've said to him that if he doesn't hold me hands, then, you know, an old man's going to take him and all that. It's on your own doorstep, isn't it? I mean, I come and strand every day with my kids. Of course, it's right, it's right with everybody. Of bunches of flowers have been laid in response to a crime whose shadow is hanging heavily over the city. The appalling murder of a defenceless toddler. James suffered truly horrific injuries, said the police, before his body was dumped on a railway and hit by a train. The discovery of his remains has led to a massive public response. Detectives are tonight studying the evidence so far accumulated. But police still haven't traced these two youths, photographed leading James away by a security camera. Inch by inch, officers have searched the line today, trying to establish the exact sequence and timing of events. The inquiries have gone on all day and they've been going on all evening. The search as urgent as ever for the vital clue that will lead the police to whoever killed a helpless two-year-old. Today, the police investigating the murder announced a breakthrough in their inquiries. Following the abduction of James Bulger from the New Strand shopping precinct in Bootle on Friday the 12th of February, 1993, and the subsequent findings of his body on the railway line in Walton on Sunday the 14th of February, Two boys aged 10 years from Walton area have been arrested and are currently being interviewed by Merseyside police at police stations on Merseyside. Today's announcement came after hundreds of calls to the incident room overnight following the first... Holy fuck, this guy's... A, I'm from Serbia and this murder was in my English textbook. I feel like England is... is so desperate for murders that they just like one time a murder happens they're like we got to put it in an international textbook i mean i i from what i understand this is like a horrific one this is like a specific one but this case is taught in most english schools wait what the fuck like this is like a murder it's a part of like history yo I learned this in school, too, but I'm from the UK. Wait, really? Screening on television last night of an enhanced video photograph of the two youths seen with James Nine months can no longer be shown for legal reasons. Like yesterday, keep being a the dull piece of shit legend you are. Almost 27 years later, this surveillance image remains etched in the minds of the millions familiar with the case of James Bulger. On the afternoon of February 12, 1993, 10-year-olds John Venables and Robert Thompson would enter a shopping mall in the northern part of Liverpool with the intention of kidnapping a small child, something they attempted not once, but twice. Inside a department store, a woman noticed that two boys were trying to get her two-year-old son's attention. Moments later, she realized he was missing. 
The woman began calling his name and ran outside, where she found Venables and Thompson beckoning the boy to follow them. When Venables saw the mother, he told the boy to go back to her, and they both vanished. Mere luck had saved that child, but also sealed the terrible fate of another. Soon after the aborted abduction, Venables and Thompson were loitering around a candy stand when they noticed two-year-old James Bulger by the door of a nearby butcher's shop. With Bulger's mother momentarily distracted, they got the toddler to come with them. Venables then took him by the hand and led him away. Damn, dude, this kid's fucking 10 years old, but he looks hey. evil. James and his abductors were caught by a surveillance camera leaving the mall at 3.42 p.m. By this time, James's mother, Denise, was panicking. She quickly found mall... Literally doing the trademark Kubrick stare, dude. Dude, what the fuck happened to these kids? How are they such Security psychos, personnel dude? and described her son and what he was wearing. They announced the boy's name over the loudspeakers, but there was no sign of him, and he was then reported missing to the local police station. After the boys had led James away from the mall, he began crying out for his mother. They ignored him and continued down to a secluded area near a canal where they dropped him on his head and left him on the ground crying. A woman passing by noticed the child but did nothing. The boys then called for James to come, and he still followed. His forehead was bruised and cut, causing his abductors to pull his jacket hood over his head to hide the injury. They then walked away from the canal and through a residential street, where one witness later reported noticing a small child crying while being forcefully led by two older boys. She didn't report the incident, but gave a statement five days later. I've had people say- Dude, for the record, like, you would never expect that to be a kidnapping, because it's literally 10-year-olds. Like, it's easy to just be like, oh, what the fuck was this person doing? What the fuck? Like, why didn't you tell the cops? But it's like, why would you ever think- why would you ever think that? Ever. You would literally just assume that it's like brothers and the, the younger brother's just like fucking being a dick and crying or some shit. Or the older brother's like bullying the younger child. Like you would never, ever in a million years report that as like something that is suspicious. It's because the kid's crying and shouting for his mom. Okay, but you're... What? Okay. So what? That's just exclusively hindsight. Seven months foggers. You would never ever in a... Dog. You would literally never think a 10-year-old is kidnapping someone. You are fucking so crazy. If you think you saw a 10-year-old kidnapping, like, a 4-year-old or whatever, you're literally out of your mind. <clears throat> no matter what happens, like, no matter what happens, they're fucking 10, dude. Are you kidding me? You would never think that. You'd just be like, wow, these 10-year-olds are being dickheads to a, a smaller baby. Why didn't someone do this? Why didn't someone do that? But... You know, now the guilt, the guilt's there. I don't think I'll ever get this, this guilt. <laughs> I've seen them. I heard the baby crying. And I watched them. Oh, God, I watched them. I, I've got to look out this window every day. I see these kids. I go to bed and I see these kids. A second witness also oh noticed the trio while That's driving, so but only reported the incident when the story hit the front page of the national news three days later. I went to the police that same day on the Monday and reported the incident and I said to the police at that stage you know I hope that it wasn't him because I couldn't live with the thought that I could have done something about it. At some time between 5.45 and 6.30 p.m. Thompson and Venables brought the exhausted two-year-old to a railway. When they arrived the boys hesitated perhaps reconsidering what they were about to do and briefly turned away from the embankment. But then they both turned back toward the privacy of the area and the brutal torture and murder of James Bulger occurred. The boys splashed blue paint in the child's eyes, kicked him, threw bricks and stones at him, and stuffed batteries into his mouth. 
They then what? proceeded to hit James over the head with a 22-pound iron bar, which resulted in 10 skull fractures. All in all, the child sustained 42 injuries to his face, head, and body. Authorities later concluded that there was no way to tell which injury represented the fatal blow. There was also a sexual component to the crime as well, which was so disturbing that most news outlets refrained from reporting on it. Eventually, the two boys placed James's dead body across the train tracks in hopes of making the whole thing look like an accident. They then abandoned the scene before a train came and severed the toddler in two. With little to go on, Bulger's parents were initially the prime suspects, but when police saw the CCTV footage from the shopping mall, the story went nationwide and the search for Bulger intensified. His body was discovered two days after his disappearance. All of the instruments used in the attack were found strewn around the area, including the stolen tin of blue paint which was reported on the news. An anonymous phone call to the police then implicated John Venables and Robert Thomas Thompson as the killers. The caller told police that Venables and Thompson were both absent from school on the Friday of the abduction and that they had seen blue paint on the Yeah, I would put these kids in a cannon, probably, and just like shoot them out into the sun. There's just no, there's no saving these kids, dude. No shot. Send them out to space with Elon Musk. Let Elon Musk deal with them. Like, how the fuck do you become this, dude? At the age of 10, how do you become that? At the age of 10, how do you become that? I get, like, a lifetime of abuse and whatnot leads you to this kind of behavior at the age of, like, 26. You know, add on some additional uh, problems. 10, dude? Bad early socialization. Dude, that is... You saying that, especially what we know after the fact, makes it seem like a reasonable take. It's just like, it's so crazy. Fortnite does that? Yeah, back in 1993. Sleeve of John Venable's jacket. The police then visited both children's homes and discovered blood on Thompson's shoes and blue paint on Venable's jacket. Both boys were then taken in for questioning. He said that the two of you were in the strand and that you saw the little boy. We never. We never. Is that the God's honest truth? God's honest truth. I'm, I'm telling you that we never. He was too scared. He was probably too scared. And he said that you took him by the hand and led him out of the strand shops. Okay, the kid's name is Venables, dude. I'm starting to I'm starting to see a pattern here. Like Like with a name like that, it's just like you you literally have like a villain name, you know what I mean? It's just It, it does. It has demonic energy. It literally has demonic energy. What was the other name that we looked at before? By the way, remember how my what was the other name? I remember from a while ago. No, it was it wasn't Draco. What the fuck was it? Lazarus. Yeah, Lazarus, dude. Literally, you name your child Lazarus, dude. They're, that kid's gonna fucking do shit. I mean, come on, bro, Lazarus, dude. Really? Just name your child Methuselah. Oh, it's the family name? Okay, well, regardless. Um, same shit. My little bro's friend is called Lazarus. Yo, watch out. Be on the lookout. Damien. Damien's kind of, ah. So... Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Let's keep going. We never. He's a liar. Calm down.
Okay, I literally sound exactly like this kid when I do Aiden voice. Kyle is a fuck. I'm sorry. Man, I know we're not supposed to be lighthearted. This is a devastating case. But like you guys keep saying my accent is terrible, but it actually is my Aiden voice, like this kid's voice. Said yikes. Okay, I'm sorry. I know. I know we're not making I, like it's an unacceptable time to do the unacceptable time to be doing uh, uh bravophobia. But it was just too close not to point out. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, don't get all right, it's all right. Come on, bro. It's all right. Dude, this Come fucking on, okay. by the way, I literally don't I don't feel any empathy for this kid. I feel like he's just lying to fucking cops with with not a single fear uh, in his in his eyes or mind or he's just like literally crying, lying. It's just like I never got the boy. Piece of shit. I never killed someone. Yeah, we was, but we never saw any kids there. I love you saying that. We never that. got any kids. <laughs> so you were in Bootle Strand. Was you in Bootle Strand? Yeah, we never got a kid, Mom. We never, we never got Mrs. a kid. Mrs. Venables, would you, um, I must ask you not to get angry with it. A short while ago, as is detailed on your custody record out there, you had a conversation with your mum, and you then requested that myself and Dave Tanner come into the room. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And what was it you told us? That I killed James. We took him on the rail and shot him and started throwing bricks at him. Why did he throw bricks at him? No. Must, did it make him fall over? No. So he's saying he threw him. I don't know, the what do you do in this a situation of your parent? Uh, late term abortion, I think, probably. Like, what are you supposed to do? Act like that is not your child? Literal fucking hell spawn, dude. Bro, I'm telling you, this is like... This is like out of a movie, dude. This is like Omen. You know what I mean? It, what, what do you do? You, you bring a life onto this planet, and it's literally the devil. Like, what are you going to do? People from this area are famous for stealing. Okay, dude. <laughs> I guess they they were excited that their son was a murderer then. Venables was caught with kitty porn after being freed. Okay, dude. Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? After 10, at just 10 years old, John Venables Kelsey abducted and murdered James Walker at two years old. Wait. They were released at the age of 18. They let him out. His current new identity came under threat in February 2018 after James Bulger's dad, Ralph, launched high court proceedings against the order that allows him to live anonymously. James's mom does not support the proceedings and said her son's killer should keep his an anonymity to avoid vigilante justice. But the president, he was given a second identity following his release from prison in 2013, but he found himself back in maximum category AJL, which he cannot identify for legal reasons. After being caught with vile child abuse images, Following a top secret police investigation? Are you fucking kidding me? Wait, is this in the video? Why are you guys yelling? Well, someone sent it to me. What do you want? Someone sent me the fucking link. I didn't think it was going to be in the video. And he didn't fall over. Yeah, he did fall over. And he just kept on getting back up again. He wouldn't stay down. What would say while he was doing all this? He was saying to stay down, stupid dick and thing like that. Why do you want him to stay down? I don't know. I wanted him dead properly. So we walked up to him and we were walking around with him and I took his hand. And well, whose idea was it to walk towards him? Mine. Was it? 
Then it was Robert's idea to kill him. And we went outside to take him out. What for? I don't know. He said, let's throw him in the water. He was persuading him. He said, kneel down and let's look at the water and all that, but he wouldn't. Because when we wouldn't get him down, Robert picked him up and f threw him on the floor, and that's where he got his bump on his head. Where'd you go with him after that? The, the reservoir where that woman spotted us. Is young James walking with you by this time, or are you still having to pull him? Young James. He was walking with us. Was he upset, or had he made friends with you? No, he was all nice. I know the truth. I believe I, I know the I, truth. I was there. That's right. He waved. Correct, but I know there's a lot of things that have gone on. Yeah, well, do you know it was me that killed them? It wasn't. I never even killed them. <laughs> Bro, are you fucking kidding me? This kid, dude, he's also a debate lord on top of everything else. He's like a torturer, a psycho, and a fucking debate lord. He's like literally debating an adult cop. What the fuck is going on here, dude? Why are their brains so well developed? Like, you're a child, dog. You're, you're 10 years old. Here's a fucking full-blown adult being like, oh, you did it. He's like, well, you weren't there, were you? Well, you fucking weren't there, were you? I never killed them. <laughs> hey, can I just join in any of the things I should know about? I'll be over in a few minutes if you just tell them the truth. Tell them to break in his face. I did not do it. <laughs> right, try and stop. Right, let's, we've got, we're getting there, aren't we? We're getting to the truth now. Yeah, well, I'm going to end up getting out of the plane because I've got blood on me. He grabbed it the baby's hand and just walked around the strand. And then he let him go loose then. Did he? Well, when we were by the church, he let him go. And you were with John then? You shook your head. You shook your head. Yeah, I told him to take him back. You did as well? Bro, 10 year old kids engaging in premeditated murder and then, like, even a subsequent cover up is just like impossible to fit in my brain. Like, they're 10 years old. Just do fucking Fortnite dances, dude. That's what 10 year olds are doing. I mean, 10-year-olds literally watch Minecraft uh, compilations. Like, they don't... Like, it... They are... They're, like, behaving in, in this most vile way, like full-blown adults. You know what I mean? Even the way they're talking... Even the way both of these kids have, like... Tried to originally lie to the police, like... I'm getting all the blame. I was just asking your son. We're yeah, trying to find well, we the truth. We always get the blame. Wait a minute, Bobby. Listen. <laughs> just, just calm yourself down for a minute, okay? You're all right. He said he wants us more. So what? What did you say to him? What did you say? You. We're going to try and find us more. Where did you leave him then? On a reservoir place. I don't believe you would have left him there. You took him away from where the reservoir is and walked down somewhere else. Where? Going towards the police station. Like, even this, even this lie is so strange, like... It's almost like they're saying, oh, no, I only assaulted him. I didn't actually murder him. You know what I mean? Like, like, how does he have the wherewithal to know just to say that he assaulted the kid and then the kid just fucking died? Like, if you're, if you're 10 fucking years old, like, you know what I mean?
It's crazy, dude. They're 10 years old. How does he know to like lie about uh, like a like a smaller charge basically? You were a dumb kid, Hassan, lol. I'm sorry, dude. Are you really saying in the chat that you would be smart enough as a 10-year-old to, like, cover up your tracks? Is that what you're... <laughs> okay, there's something going on with these rocks. No ads. I have those, like, mineral things, those rocks. And I place them on top of one another, and they keep falling at, like, really random times, the, the mineral rocks that you guys have sent me. I never killed him. The trials of John Venables and Robert Thompson commenced nine months later, and they were both convicted of murder. Okay, they're both fucked up, dude, especially this one. Just from the face, okay? If I see that kid, like, you know what I mean? You, you go to a barbecue and you're like, your, your uncle's friend has a kid like that. You're like, nah, there's something wrong with that kid. Get the kid out of here. No, I don't care. He's 10 years old, dude. Nope, fuck that. That's, that is a scary looking kid, dude. Fucked vibes. Absolutely disastrously fucked vibes, dude. This kid wouldn't allow him near a school, okay? Making them the youngest to be found guilty of the offense in over 250 years. Two days later, on Monday the 22nd of February, the boys were taken to South Sefton Magistrates Court in Bootle for a hearing. Media interest in the case was enormous. Television crews and photographers from all over the world came to Bootle to get a shot at the boys. Public anger, too, had been building for some time in Liverpool, both against the boys and the intrusiveness of the media. A menacing crowd gathered outside the court, waiting for the boys to come out. Yeah, I take back everything I said about Minecraft stands, dude. I would much rather have, like, little 10-year-old Zoomer babies running around being like, oh, my God, that's fucking, you're triggering me, or, you know, trigger warning, Hassan Neg. Like, Hassan uh, earlier today talked about DID, and that's really fucked up. You know, I'm so much better than whatever the fuck is going on here. You know, I would rather have them occupied with, like, disassociating into being Dream or something. Let them go? As the boys left in the transit van, bricks were being thrown, people were running up to the side of the truck. Oh, they wanted to let him go so they could kill him, dude. That's crazy. Oh, they wanted to, like, let the little... You're gonna fucking... What are you gonna do? You're gonna murder a 10-year-old, dude? Like, I'm talking... I'm talking a big game here, but, like, let's be real. I think it's good that they were, you know, uh, put through the criminal justice system in a more empathetic capacity. There's no capital punishment. Like, ultimately, that's what, that is what the right thing to do is. And I'm glad that the government was doing the right thing in that situation, and I'm not running anything. Because, like, I personally would have been like, yeah, no, throw them to the fucking crowd. Four months with the has chuds. Love you all. I think you can easily rehab 10-year-olds compared to fully adult killer. No. No, no shot. No. Dude, that kid, like, maybe one of them. In a situation where you have two 10-year-olds, both of them being, like, bloodthirsty psychopaths is unlikely. So one of them was less bloodthirsty of a psychopath than the other. Maybe that one can be rehabilitated, but both of them? Fuck no. One of them is the mastermind, and that one is, like, there's no... There is no way to medically fix something like that, okay? Sorry, it's just the fucking truth. What do I always talk about when I talk about, like, prison abolition and all this other shit? There are edge cases that you cannot fix. We happen to keep looking at the edge cases, which does not reflect the entirety of the criminal justice system. Murderers can be rehabilitated, but there are certain kinds of murders that are impossible to rehabilitate, okay? Antisocial personality disorders are unfortunately very hard to diagnose, and very hard to figure out if they actually truly rehabilitated. 
Radlib Hassan? Radlib Hassan? What? They're literally 10? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. One of those fucking 10-year-olds is a psycho. Like, straight up. This is why I meant it wasn't funny to joke about. This really shook people and it's still taught to people. Yeah, one of them is a fucking psycho that will never be rehabilitated. And saying that currently medical science that we have readily accessible cannot rehabilitate antisocial personality disorders is not a rad lip take. It's just the truth. You, you want me to lie and tell you that it's, it's not the truth? It's true. We currently do not know how to, one, appropriately diagnose psychopathy, and we also do not know how to appropriately rehabilitate psychopathy. Pedophilia as well. But... Hassle. I'm not saying murder those kids, but you're, you're going to probably have to keep them under uh, constant round-the-clock supervision. Source? I don't know, man. Psychopath test. There's like a bunch of different uh, things that you can read about how difficult it is to criminally charge psychopaths. Uh, like, I, I, don't, I don't know what, like, what, what source to start off with. I've read a lot about... I, look, I, I'm fascinated with sociopaths and psychopaths. I, so it's understandable that you're asking for a source, but I don't know what to like start off with, what the starting point would be. But probably like Ron Johnson's psychopath test is pretty good. What you are stating is just incorrect. Really? So it's actually easy to medically diagnose uh, psychopaths and sociopaths, specifically psychopaths. Well, it's the official Karl Marx, so he must be right. No shot, what you are stating is just incorrect. Go ahead, please explain to me how I'm incorrect. I would love to hear, I would love to hear what official Karl Marx has to say. Oh no, I'm too high for this. MK Ultra 3579 exclamation mark MK Ultra 3579 at MK Ultra 3579 dot me dot twitch dot TV prisms. What you are stating is just incorrect. Oh no, I'm too high for this. I hate this. Yeah, you must be high if you think that it's like uh, easy to diagnose uh, people who have antisocial personality disorders like who are criminally uh, or, or criminally in a criminal case diagnosing someone there's actually a doctor that was studying sociopaths and realized he was one by looking at his own brain scan their brain scan their brains are literally different such a bitch made move by the way 17 month subscriber to just be like you're literally wrong and then be like oh I'm too high You are correct, but I don't like hearing that we should throw 10-year-olds in prison. Okay. This does not reflect the 99.9% .9 of juvenile offenders, okay? 99.9999999% of juvenile, off juvenile, juvenile offenders, I can't even talk, have absolutely nothing to do with this case. I hear what you're saying, but you're not a doctor and you're not a psychiatrist. Okay. It doesn't matter. I know I'm not a doctor nor a psychiatrist, but what I'm saying about, uh, uh, about diagnosing uh, psychopaths is still, unfortunately, very difficult. Treatment of psychopaths is also, unfortunately, very difficult. It's true. I'm right. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like, Here, I mean, here, this is from uh, the Journal of Royal Society of Medicine from 2004, but 
Back then it says, even then it says, no one doing research on personality disorder is satisfied with the current diagnostic systems. Like first fucking line is about how 2004 Keck W, are you fucking stupid? Dude, then you send me a foolproof system of, of, of diagnosis for, for psychopathy right now. It's literally one currently untreatable. That doesn't mean it will always be untreatable, but it literally is untreatable. And also it's very easy, unfortunately, for people with antisocial personality disorders to be able to fucking evade like the diagnostic systems. Especially if you're an older, if, especially if you're an older psychopath who has already gone on for, uh, who has already like lived for an extended period of time, you know how to show empathy. You know how to manipulate the diagnostics. Okay, this is from 2013. It says, reducing psychopathic violence, a review of the treatment literature. Psychopathy reflects a pathological form of personality that predisposes individuals who are at risk of perpetration of chronic. By the way, this doesn't mean that all psychopaths are violent. I'm not saying that at all, for the record. They are overrepresented in corporate boards, government, and also in prison, but... Psychopaths and sociopaths are constructs of antisocial personality disorder. Their first lies in where the behaviors originate. Sociopathy comes from interactions in the social environment. Epigenetic psychopathy is genetic. So what's up, dude? Radlid defends child murder emotional. I'm not saying they should murder him. I literally said it's good that they are. I literally said it's good that they. <sighs> it's good that they didn't fucking, uh, you know, throw him into the crowd. There's currently no consensus on trying to diagnose psycho psychopathy. A lot of the guidelines are currently centered around its criminality rather than its medical prognosis. You're fucking... Oh, dude. Fuck you, dude. I saw. Okay. Yeah, it's top of the fucking hour, dude. Okay? Yeah. It's top of the hour. For the past three and a half decades, the psychopathy checklist revised and the self-report psychop psychopathic personality inventory revised have been the standard measures of diagnosis. Technological approaches can enhance these diagnostic method methodologies. The purpose of the paper is to present a state-of-the-art review of various technological approaches. Both of these, both of these checklists are routinely, routinely. This is the closest to correct you have read. What? Hassan, sometimes your takes aren't always right, except that dumbass. Bro, every single fucking paper that you guys, that we just read, proves I'm correct. I don't know why you're saying this. The last... This is incredibly recent, what, the, what you're sending me. Like, chat is making it seem like this has been the fucking law of the land. Wait, it's from 2017. Images of prisoners' brain shows important differences. And even then, we still don't know. Diagnosing this stuff in a consenting patient is a lot different than in a potentially non-cooperative one. I know. Like, I, especially as... <laughs> especially as someone who is literally... Especially as someone who's literally read up on this a lot. That's why I'm like very frustrated by chat being like, you're fucking literally wrong. There are a profound amount of problems currently with the most common way of doing uh, diagnoses on who's this, uh, who has antisocial personality disorder or not. Okay. I don't know why 
I don't know why if fucking people are not like, I, I don't know why people are just not listening to what I have to say. I don't know what happened in your brains that you unironically think that like, Okay, what I was saying is it's not easy to diagnose but with the right medication regimen and bi-weekly check-ins. They're able to live semi-independently. Wow. That was the reason why you said I was wrong? I should ban you right now. You have to be high for thinking that, like, you, you started one of the worst fucking stun locks where I'm literally 100% correct. And every motherfucker in the chat started agreeing with you just to be... What you're stating is just incorrect. You were wrong because you said it's impossible to diagnose. It, it is not... <laughs> dude. It's not easy to diagnose. Is not does not mean that it's a fucking 80% diagnosis rate especially when it comes to criminal psychopaths, okay? I mean, also, I personally mentioned monitoring, and that's the only thing we can do. And you can't correctly medicate psychopaths either. A doctor could potentially diagnose a so psychopath if a psychopath or an if someone with an antisocial personality disorder willingly goes to a doctor to fucking figure the shit out. But if you are already a murderer, you're not going to cooperate with a fucking doctor. That's the other problem. Yeah, this is true. You can't even diagnose a child with an antisocial personality disorder because uh, they haven't... That's something that happens when your brain is, like, fully fucking developed. <sighs> that's the other issue. Anyway. I guess what we learned is if you're too fucking high, don't immediately come like with a, dude, you're wrong. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to fucking hit the ad break now. I forgot to run it cuz I got so stun locked, but Last bullet point on the study from 2020 says exactly what you've been saying. For many years psychopathy was considered impossible to treat. However, new studies are showing that although psychopaths are difficult to treat as they are often unpleasant, disruptive, non-compliant, they still show improvement if they receive adequate doses of treatment. Cognitive behavioral programs to treat psychopathy are currently being developed and evaluated, so they currently don't fucking they currently do not have a foolproof or even a method for, for successfully treating psychopath, psychopathy. Got it. That's what you got from that? Yeah, it is what I got from that. Dude, this is one of the... This is one of the, like, most heavily fucking debated issues in criminal justice. And you motherfuckers literally just arrived at it yesterday. And you're over here talking like you know what the fuck you're talking about. It's so frustrating, dude.
Like, I know we've been watching a lot of fucking murder investigations and shit like that, but that doesn't really make you an expert or someone who's, like, read anything on this. It's really annoying, especially considering, like, yeah, I don't really read a lot, but, like, this is one area where I, I have read a lot. And you are? Yes, I am. This is one of the few fucking instances where I, like, actually have done a lot of reading on. Like, a lot. beyond the normal amount of reading. Fuck me, dude. Reading gruesome murders, expert in cases of extreme neurodivergence. Wait, no, not from reading gruesome murders, dumbass. I'm giving you specific, I'm giving you specific shit. It has nothing to do with gruesome murders. Why are chatters doing on the this? Side with their fists. The boys I know didn't like that one bit. There's been a backlash against horror videos as Britain searches for answers in the wake of the James Bulger murder and the life sentences on his schoolboy killers. The case has already split the church and the government in a damaging row over who's to blame. But there's alarm now with a death threat from an uncle of little James. New flowers today marked painful memories of the Bulger trial as politicians and churchmen blamed one another in their search for reasons for the murder. Feelings everywhere were running high today, nowhere more than in a phone-in on BBC Television's Good Morning with Anne and Nick programme, when James Bulger's uncle, who was the one called to identify the child's body, threatened to kill the two boys. Looks to me like everyone's making excuses for them, and there is no excuses, Anne. They took the child, they battered them to death, and if they don't stay in jail forever, if they ever get old, we'll be waiting, and when we get old of them, we'll kill them. Why did they do it? Jesus you know, Christ, what, I mean... What purposes are there? What was in their minds to do it? Well, obviously, we couldn't answer that question um, at that time. In the Commons, some MPs struggling to find any kind of action to express their revulsion turned on horror videos that might have influenced the boys. The children had watched cartoons in this video shop straight after the killing. A month before, John Venable's father had rented Child's Play 3, a mainstream 18-rated black comedy showing a demonic doll being battered to death. The Bulger trial judge surprised the police investigating the case when he suggested violent videos may have played a part in the case. The police said they had no evidence to suggest it. However, responding to criticism, Sky Television said it's dropping tomorrow night's planned screening of Child's Play 3, while another video chain said they were burning 10,000 copies. The youngest murderers this century were driven at speed to an indefinite future in custody, detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. The sentence that has been passed is the only sentence that the court could pass. They recognised that, but no sentence the court could pass would ever bring James back, and nor, in their view, could it ever properly punish those two boys for what they did. They were both given an indefinite sentence, which has no maximum, but has a minimum determined on a case-by-case -case basis. In this case, it was just eight years, and despite public outrage, they would end up serving this minimum sentence, and were each released in 2001, when they were both 18 years old. Lord Wolf has decided the tariff should expire today. He says the boys, both 18, are genuinely remorseful, and further detention wouldn't be constructive. No shot. It was a terrible offence, but they were only children. They were only just criminally responsibility, criminally responsible when it occurred. And it has to take into account the undoubted progress which they've made. James Bulger's mother, Denise Fergus, said she was shocked and disgusted by the decision. It means her son's killers could be out in a matter of months. I'll never forgive them for what they've done, never. I'll take the hate for them to my grave. It's always for their side, you know, they were only ten and... It's just excuse after excuse for them all the time. They're not considering James. That's fucking psychopathic too. It's just like, oh Jesus Christ. James isn't here anymore, but them two are. 
They were given new identities and granted legal anonymity for life due to the public fury that surrounded the case and the danger of citizens hunting them down in order to take vengeance. In 2010, John Venables was taken back to prison for downloading child pornography of male toddlers. He served three years in prison and was released in 2013, only to be brought back again four years later, after a pedophile manual that provided instructions on having sex with kids was discovered on his computer. He was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. They just don't want him in the There you fucking go, dude. There you go. We read some of it already, but like, that dude is not treatable, man. He's just not. He's literally not. He's not. There's nothing. You can't do anything. I'm not saying you should murder him or anything like that. The state should not. But like, that person cannot help themselves. And currently, unfortunately, and this is something I always mention as well, there is no way to treat that person. There is no successful way to treat that person with our current medical science. There might be in the future, but right now there isn't. They okay. So what does you is throwing them back into the public? And I think it's wrong, you know. I'm more fearing now that someone is going to mistake him someone else's venables and do someone who's innocent harm. That's my biggest fear now. Do you trust that the authorities can monitor him properly? No, definitely not. They couldn't they monitor him the first time. What makes them so sure they're going to monitor him now? They haven't got a clue. I think they're not doing the jobs properly. They've got jobs there to do and they're not doing them. You know, they let him slip through the... Psychopathy is treatable. Look at the doctor who found out he's a psychopath. Did he go home and murder his wife after a brain scan? No. Are you fucking stupid? Do you think that, like... Being a psychopath automatically means you're going to start being a violent psychopath? When did I ever say that? That's not even a good bait, dude. Shut the fuck up. The fingers the first time now, so it's out it's, it's going to happen again. He got away with so much. The most prevalent question surrounding the case was just how in the world this could even happen. How could two children at such a young age hurt another in such a cruel and horrific manner? The trial had not sought out what could have been the motivation, and this therefore remained a source of much speculation long after. This home video was taken at a school party six months before the killing. Robert Thompson is the little boy circled. Dude, stop advocating for chemical castration. Are you fucking insane? That is a horrifying, torturous, inhumane uh, punishment, dude. Speaking of chemical castration, uh, they used to do that in England, as a matter of fact. So, uh, you know. Even to heroes. What shocks is his size and childishness. His family life was unhappy. A social work report after the killing revealed that his father was a violent drunk who had disappeared. I'm talking about Alan Turing, chat. Yeah. He took his own life, right, afterwards because of the chemical castration. Peered. His mother had subsequently attempted suicide. She too drank heavily. He was the fifth of seven brothers who grew up afraid of each other. It was alleged that they assaulted and tied each other up. John Venables came from a more secure home, but something was wrong and his education was failing. A teacher from his previous school wrote a report in which she described his disturbed behavior. How, among other things, he attacked other children, hung himself upside down from coat pegs, lay under chairs, and stuck paper all over his face. Public sentiment refuted the claims that both Thompson's abusive background and Venable's exposure to violent videos may have been a predominant cause, claiming that many children come from adverse backgrounds and many more watch the same age-restricted material before they come of age, yet the overwhelming majority of these children never come close to committing these types of offenses. A popular psychological viewpoint emerged just over a decade later, being that this was a case where two children with rare yet similar psychological makeup happened to cross paths 
and it was their own influence on each other that became the motivation to commit the crime. The preceding argument that most children who emerge from adversity in fact become decent people was agreed with, yet this was explained through the notion that most of these children come across mediating factors in their journey, and this provides them with an alternative and more virtuous direction. This can be a teacher at school, a friend that comes from a good home, or some type of program that provides a sense of belonging and structure. The argument is that rather than finding these external sources of correction, Venables and Thompson found each other. Two individuals who for their own unique reasons were so alienated from the primary values of modern society that an idea in- Yes, they castrated Alan Turing for being gay, okay? They didn't castrate him for being a pedophile or anything. They castrated him for being gay. He chose castration over going to jail. He was gonna go to jail after fucking literally like breaking uh, hella Nazi codes. That's what the UK did to him, okay? He had the option of, he was a hero, uh, inventor of like the modern computer, visionary mathematician. He's known as the have, father of computer science and artificial intelligence. He's a cryptologist, mathematician, and they fucking chemically castrated him. Now they put him on a banknote, 50 pounds banknote, I guess, but. He ended his life at the age of 41 by eating an apple laced with cyanide because he had the option, either he was going to get chemically castrated or go to jail, and he chose chemical castration. It is incredibly inhumane. It's incredibly fucked up. You cannot do that to people. Okay? Alan Turing. Also, there was a really good movie about his life, too. You can do it with the child molesters law? No, you can't. You can't do it to anyone. You shouldn't be able to do it to anyone. You should not be... The Imitation Game, is that what the movie was? Yeah, it's very good. Very good movie. You can't do that to anyone. The government should not engage in capital punishment, and the government should not chemically castrate people. Chemical castration with pedophiles is different from homosexuals slash normal people? No, it doesn't matter, dude. No, dude. Okay, like, let's start torturing people, too, then. Why do you think, do you think torture is acceptable, then? If someone has murdered someone, can you torture them? You can't. A lot of you are looking for vengeance, not justice. Justice is not about vengeance. Okay? I think we joke too much about me, like, throwing people into volcanoes and shit. That, like, chat needs to remember what my point of view is, like, my, what my actual point of view is on criminal justice. What if it's a violent child molester in question? What if castration gave the person a normal ability to live a normal life? That's a psychotic take. That's not a real thing.